Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Gray Matter. In today's video, I've decided to do a new take on the day in the life of a security analyst. This video includes what to expect in terms of the main duties and tasks and how to handle the responsibilities. The main goal of the video is to demystify the vast number of job listings and break down the more common tasks you'll find in the field. This is important because as analysts, we can wear many hats, depending on the needs of an organization, and my personal experience can greatly differ from somebody else's. It's important to also note that just because a job description has something in it as a duty or requirement isn't always indicative of the main duties of the role. You may be doing less or more. Depending on the size and structure of the company and security team, HR may be even creating these posts, and they're not security professionals or have an idea of the technical scale of what the organization needs. So for this video, I've picked out five job descriptions from entry to mid-level analysts, and we'll go over the responsibilities in the description. The duties can be found on jobs from various levels and titles from SOC Analyst, Security Analyst, and Vulnerability Analyst. And at the end of the video, I'll add some helpful tips for you as you begin your job search. Let's jump into it. Familiarizing yourself with the environment. One of the most important aspects and duties as a security analyst is getting to know the basics of the organization's layout. This means learning about the network's topology and architecture, such as what kinds of devices are being used, connections and protocols, and the tools that are being used. You'll likely be invited to team meetings pretty quickly, and you can learn a lot from those by listening and interacting. So remember to take notes and ask questions. Being curious is important, so read through an organization's documentation and processes. Staying current on emerging threats and new technology in the news. Once you have a good grasp and understanding of the environment, you can use that knowledge to identify security threats. Maybe you see that Google Chrome has a new vulnerability and you let someone know on your team that there's a patch available. If you're not sure where to find your news sources and where to stay current, check out my video titled Staying Informed on Cybersecurity where I provide the tools and resources I personally use daily to stay on top of emerging threats. Maintaining security tools. You may be in charge of owning one of the organization's security tools. This means that you'll be one of or the sole person who is responsible for its use and also maintaining any available updates and settings. This could be a tool like a SIEM solution, which is a security information and event manager, which is designed to monitor network traffic, systems, and devices. This can be used to gather information and investigate alerts. When it comes to responding to alerts, these might come in daily, and depending on what type of analyst you are, this may be the main portion of your job. If you're a SOC analyst, which is an analyst who works in a security operations center, you may spend most of your day responding to these security alerts. Working with other teams. You'll be working with other teams to collaborate and discuss events or projects, and this is where you'll showcase what are known as soft skills, which aren't technical. It's important to be able to communicate and work well with others, along with having an understanding what your role is in security. Simply demanding something to be done won't help you persuade others. Your objectives must align with the business, and you need to be able to build a case for what you're asking for. This may be something like a new tool or optimizing a process. Researching and identifying vulnerabilities. When it comes to vulnerabilities, you may be looking into one found in a vulnerability scan or you might be looking into one found in a news article. This may include identifying the criteria for the vulnerability to exist or what happens when it's exploited. You may be involved in the patching process this way and determining if something should be patched or not. There's also debriefing, and that's when you communicate findings to other teams and upper management. This may involve a suspicious alert that's escalated or a threat that's found within the environment. This next one is related to awareness training such as phishing campaigns. You may be tasked with setting up a phishing campaign, which are phishing simulations. These aren't real phishing emails, of course, but they'll look that way to the user. These are good for getting users to stay on alert and vigilant. They're also beneficial for collecting data and identifying what kind of emails your users are most vulnerable to. Reviewing reported phishing emails. Most organizations have some sort of phishing email reporting solution and sometimes a security analyst will be tasked with reviewing reported emails to identify if they're legitimate or not. Some of these reported emails will be very crude, and others may even impress you with how clever they are. Writing incident reports and incident management. Depending where you are in your career, you may be tasked with some duties that may or may not be as exciting or intriguing, depending what you're into. 
This can include the writing portion of incident reports and managing security events and incidents within your organization. Another writing portion of the job may include writing and reviewing policies and procedures. Policies help and aid the enforcement of security and processes and procedures allow for efficiency and consistency. Audit and compliance. You may be involved or responsible for part of the audit and compliance side of things. This can involve security controls. A security control is a safeguard and countermeasure. An example of this may involve steps with the security awareness program or ensuring that a firewall is being audited. Recommend technical and security controls and tools. You'll also be tasked with recommending technical controls and security tools. It's important to be on the lookout and try to identify technical controls or tools that can help benefit the company's security. This could be a feature of one of the current security tools that you use and should be implemented. Don't just point out things that you see that are a problem. Come with a solution to the problem. And as promised, here are some tips to help you in your job search. Just because you don't have every single skill found in a job description doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply. It's okay to not hit every mark, and many prospective employers know this. This can also include the years of experience. If you know the concepts and topics and can discuss them in an interview, this is still valuable. And speaking of experience, you can make your own. Just because you haven't had and aren't currently working in the field doesn't mean that you can't gain experience. Create a home cybersecurity lab and play around with tools in Kali or write some PowerShell code to make some projects. You can even make your own Active Directory or reverse engineer malware at home. It's super important to make notes on your projects and you can add them to a resume. And last but not least, continue learning. Cybersecurity and technology are always changing and there's always lots to learn. Maybe the organization where you are currently doesn't use cloud, but it's still important to learn about cloud for your future endeavors. Maybe you're on the blue team and aren't involved in pen testing activities. You'll come to find that having knowledge of both sides are important. And remember to not get too discouraged. I know how difficult it can be when you first start applying to jobs in a new field. This is a whole new learning process that will take some time to get the hang of, but getting a solid resume together can be a challenge in itself. However, once that's done, it'll be a more flowing process where you can make small tweaks along the way. If you're really struggling and not getting any responses, it may be good to go back to the drawing board and reassess your resume and cover letters. Remember to tailor your resume to the job qualifications and try to apply previous experience you've had, even if it wasn't a cybersecurity job. Adding your personal projects to your resume is a plus as well. Thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on the video and subscribed. Please leave any questions down in the comment section below. Thanks.